The perilous mountains and winding roads of the Tour de France lie in testament to past battles and glories. But one descent, the Col de Porte d'Aspe, will forever be etched with tragedy. In 1995, rising star Fabio Casatelli paid the ultimate price for his dream. His death, an unwanted mark on history. But for those who knew him, including his mother Rosa, it is for being full of life that he is remembered. I was his mother, and I think he was the son everyone would have wanted. He was down to earth, humble, playful, and cheerful. He was also magnificent on a bike, and growing up in the Como region of Italy, Fabio showed his ambitions from an early age. One winter, he was in the garage bustling about with my husband's cables. He is an electrician. He was making his own snow chains so he could still ride in the snow. The kilometres paid off. At 21, he made the Italian road race team for the Barcelona Olympics, a race he won in superb fashion. He was already very happy to have been selected. That alone made him happy. It was only three people in the whole of Italy. He was already very happy to be taking part. His father was even more excited than him. He kept saying, when you go there, you will win. I saw his victory from the finish line. They had set up some kind of seating. I was up there and I couldn't come down. I was too excited. I had to be taken down. I couldn't move. He was crying and I was crying as well. We hugged each other really tight. Even after Barcelona, he was the same Fabio. He was never big-headed. In his first years as a pro, Fabio was hampered by a knee injury. But by 1995, that struggle was behind him. He had recovered from surgery and gained promising results in the Tour de Suisse and, happiest of all, became a father for the first time to his son Marco. He also earned his place with the Motorola team at the Tour de France. The night before it was his day off, he called us and we spoke for a while. I told him, Fabio, be careful. Have you seen the slopes? Put your helmet on. And he replied, Mum, I know, but I can't wear the helmet for 200 kilometres. I will wear it at the end of the race because it is not comfortable. He said, I have a baby at home. I am not an idiot. Those were his exact words. I said, be careful. And he said, of course, don't worry. July 18th, 1995, stage 15. On the dangerous descent of Col de Porte d'Aspe, Fabio Casatelli crashed with several other riders. He struck a concrete block on the roadside. Doctors were on the scene immediately, but couldn't revive him. At some point, I heard of a fall, but I didn't think it was him. I know it's not nice, but I felt a bit relieved. They did a close-up of the number. I started going back and forth to the kitchen, saying to myself, no, no, no. They say it is nothing serious and that they are looking after him. At that point, I started being agitated. It's something you feel inside. People started gathering around the house, but maybe I didn't want to understand. We then called Dr. Tester, his doctor, and he said that, unfortunately, he had died. Casatelli's teammates honoured his death at the Tour in the days following, but the tragedy had wider consequences in pro racing, prompting examination into the use of helmets, although not to be made compulsory until 2003. This year as well, all these bicycles, 
so many fools. People think more about the show and the business and the cyclists come later. They should think more about the people. The rest comes after. To this aim, a foundation was created in his honour, the Fondazione Casatelli, set up by those closest to him to promote cycling in his memory. His smile, himself, the way he was. I miss everything about him. The house is empty. He didn't deserve that. He was full of life, full of projects. He wanted to build his own house. He thought he would do so much. While some legends are remembered for their victories or their style, Casatelli's legacy lives on. The foundation continues to support local talented riders and brings people together through sport. A fitting tribute to the Olympic champion who died doing what he loved. I think he is helping us. Lots of people tell me, I have prayed to Fabio. I've asked him for this and that. And considering how he was, I think if he could, he would help us from wherever he is.